So I want to show you guys this. This is really cool. I'm building the Thor hammer right now, and this is this is one of two different prints that I have to do. Uh, this is the front half of the hammer itself. Uh, the little handle thing. The handle is split into two pieces here, and then this is the part that connects to the hammer to the handle. And then the next one has all of the little side designs on it. On it, and I'll leave a link in the description to the Thingiverse uh, that I used to to make this. But you can see that this has four different colors on it right now. And what I've been doing for the first time is really seeing how easy it is to switch the color on the Anycubic i3 Mega. Just kind of to see how easy it is in case I needed to switch colors. Because I needed to use the rest of my white. You can see right there, that's all the white that I had left. And I wanted to just get it used. That way I can order some new white and don't have to worry about making something out of that and switching colors later. This is... This print's gonna be going on for so long that I could. I came in here after like uh, I think six, seven hours of printing and put the white in real quick. And let me show you guys this. You can come down here and hit pause. Let's see how it raises up. That way you don't have that extruder setting on this the entire time burning a little hole into it. And what you can do is it stays hot and you can you can pull it out if you wanted to. There's a little push down thing right here in the back that you can push down and pull it out. But then just hit continue and it comes back down and starts going. Right where it left off. Or what I did and I'll show you guys this right now because I have this this blue here. Let me see if I can set my camera so you guys can actually see this. So what you can do here is I took the... Uh, I'm just going to use this blue as an example just so we can add a, another color to it. Uh, what I did is you got to make sure that you have a straight edge on the end. I just took these little things here. Got it straight, straight edge, and then kind of unroll a little bit of this, that way it has plenty to take. Stick this in here, it's still going at the moment, you can hear it. And now, you can take this. Flip it right here. And what you do, this has a little thing that pauses it. If once the uh, filament runs all the way through and there's no more filament in it, so I just put it behind that and push it through all the way through. So see, it didn't pause it. now I have this filament in here. Now it's just a matter of waiting for this, the rest of the black filament. And I wish I had a different filament on it so you could see it better. You can see that black filament right there. And I'm just going to follow this up. <sighs> I accidentally dropped that. So as it goes up, I'm just following it. And you want to follow it too because if you let it run all the way up, then, there we go, this has a spring in it that if you let that filament go all the way up, then you'll have to push this down or really jam that up in there to get that in between it. But if you just follow it in, it's going right behind that other filament and it's going to just keep pushing it up and it's just going to keep going up. Let's see if I can get in here really close so you can see. Yeah, it's just, it's going good now. And you're not going to be able to see the blue through here, but the cool thing about this tube, it's only the width of the filament. So the filament's not going to get jammed in there. It's not going to go one on top of the other and get jammed all in there. If it was a little bit bigger, it could. 
you could take, I mean, you might have that risk, but let's see if I can find the tube. Now you want to stay over here and watch it because as it goes, it does send it back down and send it back up. You can see how it shoots more down and shoots it up. Whenever it stops and goes to the next piece, it pulls it down. And so if it does that right as you're pushing it up, sometimes uh, it'll keep that one up there and shoot this one down. So then you kind of have to hold it up there. So do the switch when it's at a part. If you're going to do the switch while it's running, do it at a part that you know it's going to be running for a while. That way it doesn't shoot it back down because that can mess it up a little bit. Except with the orange and the green and the red, you can't really tell uh, where it's at in the tube. But I've been watching it, making sure that it's making sure that it's going up in, it's feeding through. It should be about right. Well, you can't see. It should be about right up here. Okay. Yeah, you can kind of see that on camera. It's right there. So it's getting fed down. You can see the blue. Oh, you can see it through the camera, but you can't see it uh, in here. So it's going to be going through here soon. Once it gets up into the tube, to about right here, you don't have to watch it over on this side anymore. You can just watch it go up to the tube because it's not going to back out that much. Basically, when it first goes in, you just kind of have to watch it until it gets up in, in the tube and really gets started. After that, it's not. You just kind of have to wait and see it come out. So. We're just gonna watch it and see the first layer. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the first layer on, on this black, the blue on black. You should. Uh, but you can already see the other four different layers that have been on this. And since this is a cosplay, this doesn't have to be one particular color. And part of this is to see how these colors all mix together. Part of the reason why I'm doing this. I'm gonna show you guys this again, just on here. This is that tubing. You don't have any room for air. So it just pushes it up, pushes it through. Real easy. See, when I was first going to do this, I, was I tried to take the solder gun and melt one side to the other. You know, that way it would just follow it through. I thought that's what I needed to do, but you don't. And it, that doesn't work very good trying to do that. You just have to do the steps that I just showed you. You don't even have to pause it. You can pause it like I showed you at the very beginning. You push pause, it lifts up, change it out. That's kind of the easiest way to do it. But if you don't want to wait, if you want to keep it printing. So, you know, this, this print's going to take this one of two prints and each one's going to take a day and 20 hours to do. So if you don't want to stop it because it, it's just going to take so long to do, then just switch it while it's running. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's suggested to do that. I don't think you know. Probably a lot of people will tell you not to do it, but you can. It's it's a fairly simple thing. And this is the AnyCubic i3 Mega that I'm doing this on. Turn on these lights. And you guys can see it a little bit better when it goes down. I'm just going to fast forward this until the blue goes on so you guys can see the blue, the first layer of blue. Oh, there's the blue layer. It has started. I didn't realize that. I just looked up and seen that the blue layer, there's the first blue layer there around. That's pretty cool. And all these are the same PLA brand except for the orange here. So I'm kind of a little worried about that, that maybe they don't stick together as well. Uh, but the other ones all are the same PLA brand, so they should be just fine. In fact, all of them should be just fine. And it looks like, you know, just by, I, I looked at all the parts through a magnifying glass. I mean, really looked at them and they look fine. They look flawless. I hope it's not a weaker point. I really do where the orange and the black and the white all mix to all meet, you know, where the orange meets the white and the orange meets the black. I hope that's not a weak area just because of the type of PLA it is. Because this is a $20 PLA, the orange is a $14 and $15 PLA. And I'm just hoping it's not 
a weaker point, but I have way more orange. You can see this orange back here, and I haven't been any other color. So uh, the next print's going to be mainly orange, and then whatever's left of the gray and blue. And while well, I got another black that's uh, hardly got any on it that I got to use. So basically, this print is to use up all the spools that barely have any on it. I mean, it's going to be quite a few different colors by the time we get done. And you guys will see the end process because we'll show you the the painting and the weathering and show you kind of what this hammer looks like when it's done. And I'll leave a link in the description. I want you guys can put this off too. If you have a bigger bed, it takes less time, but I had to situate this uh, s specifically in certain ways. That way it would, it would, uh, one, print in less time all together. Because if I was to print every individual piece, it would take way longer. And two, uh, this is all, all this down here is support. You can see how this curves on the inside. Um, I wanted less support. It actually starts with this turned sideways, and you can either turn it upwards where it's this is uh, one the the hammer itself is split into two halves, and this is the front piece. The other one's going to be the back piece. Uh, you can face it upwards or face it this way, but then there's a lot of uh, a lot of support on the inside and it's really hard to get it off the inside. This one looks like it got a really good let's see if I can zoom in and show you guys this. It got a really good crease right here where the support meets the regular thing. So I think this is gonna be really easy to take off. But anyways I'm Bryson Michael RC. This has been the Anycubic i3 Mega color switch. Very very simple to do. Two ways to do it. Or you can just stop the whole thing all together if you want and switch the colors that way. Do the regular filament in, filament out thing. Um, raise it up to temperature, wait for it to be done. It doesn't. But this is basically mid-print switching colors. So I'll see you guys later. Y'all have a good one. So these are going to be little side videos that I do just to kind of, uh, I don't know, show you another little hobby of mine that I'm kind of getting into a little bit. This is a T-Rex skeleton that I printed. And ever since I was real little, seeing Jurassic Park for the first time, uh, I've wanted a T-Rex head. Let me, let me put this thing together so I can show you guys.